All right, hey guys, today I wanna to talk to you guys about something new, batteries. <laughs> batteries, um, I've been seeing a lot of comments online uh, that are basically this, that people are saying like, why are you guys still messing around with DIY batteries? Isn't it like easier just now just to get lithium iron phosphate, the price is low now and the quality is high and it's just a lot easier to buy those batteries that why, why are you still messing around with DIY batteries, right? And so today I wanted to see if that is true. Maybe argue the point that maybe there is still worth it to, to play around with DIY batteries, right? So this right here is a lithium iron phosphate battery cell, right? And these are very, very popular. Uh, there's a lot of good things about these. They're long lasting. They are cheap finally, right? Or cheapish. Um, around $300, so $200, $300 a kilowatt hour, right? So that's that's affordable, that's way less than they used to be. But here is the problem. Uh, all those people that, that say that are might be missing a few key points for the average, you know, battery buyer, right? So if you buy these, you have to buy them in China. I Right now, I still can't find anyone that stocks these in the United States and that doesn't tack on another two, two like another hundred or 150 dollars per kilowatt hour right uh so basically they're buying them for 300 dollars a kilowatt hour and then bringing them in and then they're just passing all the costs of bringing them in and storing them and stuff to you and so by the time you get them yeah you're paying like 400 dollars a kilowatt hour right i still haven't found someone that uh has bought brought enough of these in a big enough load that then that price gets lower right so you still in order to get these at a decent price or less than 400 dollars a kilowatt hour uh you have to order them from china from aliexpress alibaba right and usually it takes a couple of months at best and six months at worst i ordered these sometime last year and i have to wait about three months to get them and to tell you the truth i didn't know if i was gonna get them or not i was just like well you know Paid my money, kind of forgot about them because, you know, uh, I got a bunch of things going on. And eventually, three months later, they showed up, right? So so that's number one. Um, so if you have a lot of time and you uh, can plan a battery build or whatever, and then you don't mind waiting uh, three to up to six months or whatever, right now, the shipping lines, you know, the, there's a new war that just started in the world that's going to have all effect in uh, worldwide shipping trades, shipping lines and stuff, right? So, uh, yeah, you're going to have to wait some time for these because they're coming from China, right? The other thing is that if you look online at all the people who are, uh, there's a bunch of YouTubers that, that, that are just reviewing these types of cells, right? You get to see that they keep trying to buy from a bunch of things. And even sometimes they buy like battery from one seller one time and it's great. And then they buy it again. And then the second batch is crappy. Uh, they're kind of hit and miss, right? And so you don't really know what you're getting because, well, not everybody's honest over there uh, in China, unfortunately, right? And so sometimes you think you're getting something because you've gotten it there before and then you might not. So you might get lucky. And maybe those people that are saying like, yeah, I bought a bunch of batteries that were great, they were cheap, uh, I didn't have to wait that long. Well, maybe that's anecdotal, right? Maybe they got lucky, but you know, just because they got that doesn't mean that you're gonna get the same experience buying from there, right? And so that is a thing that you have to keep in mind if you wanna do this, right? Here's the other thing. I just reviewed a battery from Jacoper. There's also Signature Solar. I Those are the only two companies that I know, but they are actually getting large quantities of batteries into the United States and then they're stocking them here and then they're selling them. But the problem with those, well, there's no problem. The, the, the thing with those is that they're not uh, cells, right? They are battery packs already. They're put together into a box. Uh, they're already packaged in 48 volts or 12 volts or, you know, 24 volts or whatever. So they're kind of plug and play batteries, right? And that's great. But, you know, the cheapest ones, I just, 
uh, reviewed one or maybe the second cheapest one that you can get right now. And it's still like around $300 uh, dollars a kilowatt hour, 300, 300 plus dollars, dollars a kilowatt hour, right? And so even though they are stock here in the United States, I was looking at the, their website and the one, for example, that I reviewed, you have to pay a flat shipping of $200, which is quite a bit of money. So when you factor in the shipping, yeah, it comes out to around $372 a kilowatt hour. Now let's look at what we can DIY and how much work and how much money it would cost. Let me show you very quickly, right? I spent like two hours this morning just looking around what I had in the shop to see if I could put something together and I did. All right, so here we go. This right here is the Jacoper battery that I reviewed last week, right? And it's 5.1 kilowatt hours and it cost about $371 with shipping included, right? Once you get it to, to your door, $371 per kilowatt hour, right? So this right here is just a box that I found Amazon and I bought it. It's like $100 for this box and it's already well it's a it's i think it's about this i think it's a rack mountable box but i don't know it's a bit different size and and width right so i think you can put these on a rack mount but i think it's for like a security system or something like that right because it's got this little key here that you can open and whatever so hundred dollars for this box uh this right here it's a product that we make and we sell at jack 35 it's called a megalodongle x and i have two versions of it i have the master this is the master and this is the slave the master has uh, a meter with the little screen here that lets you know the voltage of the battery and all sort of stuff uh and the slave doesn't right the slave is just uh it's to be used in conjunction with this right but this is like 150 bucks and what it allows you to do is just basically like a power strip it's a combiner it allows you to combine these batteries a bunch of these which and these are scooter batteries they have 20 cells in there that have 10 watt hours each they're 2600 milliamp hours and they have a built-in bms right and i have you know just taped two of these together and then i've done a bunch of them like this four it's really easy to handle them and use them in in sets of four like this right and so this combines up to 28 of those now the box you can't fit 28 in this box you can only fit 18 of them and let me show you how you fit them in there so here is a, a set of four all i did was just put tape on them like that and it's uh a lot easier to handle. I removed the uh, a fan that was in here so that it doesn't, so the batteries can fit better. So that's four, that's eight. That's 12. Sixteen. And then two, 18, right? Bam. So now all you have to do is just connect all of these batteries in there into these connectors. And then you close this. Uh, and then what I did was just drill two holes in here and uh, put some uh, terminals. And now you'll have a three and a half or 3.6 kilowatt hour battery so i've connected all of these right uh there you have some extra ones because again this will do uh up to 28 of these and this is only 18 do you see those lights right there blinking that means that some of these batteries are right and then the ones with the reds are those are being charged by the ones that are higher voltage right so once after a few minutes everything will stabilize and balance um, and so then after that, then you can just use your battery. You don't have to worry about this. This will just short itself out. They're all connected in parallel. So the, the ones that are lower voltage will eventually suck some energy from the ones that are higher voltage and then they equalize. And then when you're charging and discharging, then they all go up and down by, uh, you know, together. So then you could just close this. Yeah. 
All right, so there we go. Look, a couple of hours of work here that I did. Uh, and look at the battery. I mean, this doesn't look like a DIY thing. It looks pretty good. Once you put the cover on this one right here, it looks just like that. You know, sure, it's not as fancy. It doesn't have the communication things in here. It doesn't have the little screen, but you could add a screen here. You could add a meter for like another 50 bucks, right? Um, add a meter that measures the current that goes in and out. I even have that built into the board that's in there. Uh, and so, yeah, that wouldn't be too hard. So here we go. Three and a half kilowatts, 3.6 kilowatt hours. This is a 1C battery. So you can remove about 3.6 kilowatt, right? That's about 90 amps. Uh, this is 100 amps. So this is also a 1C, but this is higher voltage, right? So this is 48 volts. This is 36 volts, right? So what are the downsides, right? There's gotta be something, right? This just can't be just as good for way less money. Uh, well, there is. Uh, this is 48 volts, which is a standard voltage. It works with a lot of like high quality, whole house size, you know, industrial inverters and stuff. This one right here is at 36 volts and you can't change it because these are 36, right? So changing them would have to mean undoing a bunch of the work that's already here this already has their own uh, internal bms right and so it's a distributed bms in here so it's capable just as capable of this one c continuous right um then cycle life is another one this one right here is rated at four thousand uh cycles where these lithium cobalt uh, oxide batteries are rated around a thousand cycles right so 25% of the battery life on these, right? So um, will that make a huge difference? Well, yeah, it can, right? If you're cycling these things day in, day out, like once a, a, a day, then yeah, this is 20 years and this is, you know, like five years or something like that. But here's the thing, since this is way cheaper, you could just add more battery. So twice the battery, that way you cycle once every two days, for example, and then you'll extend the, the, the life of this, you know, double, right? And so there's that. So then it'll last twice as much, right? But even then, you know, it's still half the, the life of this one. So if life, uh, cycle life is a thing that is very, very important to you, then yeah, just go for that one, right? But, but there's a lot of times where systems are only there for backup, for example, right? And so if you're building a backup, why do you need something that's got 4,000 cycles? You don't, you now you're paying a premium for that stuff, right? So you can pay, you know, half the price for this and it will be good, it will last just as long as this would last because you're not cycling day in, day out, right? And so, the there are applications where you can use these so let's talk about the prices the costs right this is like i said this is uh i think the second most economical battery that comes in this format right i think there's one that sells uh but for fifteen hundred dollars right plus shipping which is about two hundred dollars this one right here at jacoper uh is seventeen hundred dollars plus two hundred dollars flat fee shipping right so you're looking at nineteen hundred dollars uh which comes out to be about three hundred and seventy one dollars per kilowatt hour right now this one right here uh it's got 18 of these packs and these packs are twenty dollars each right so that's three hundred and sixty dollars the box is a hundred dollars the dongle which is that that PCB board that's got all those connectors and stuff, that's $150. But if you get the one with the uh, the master, the one that has the other, the, the meter or whatever, that'll be $175. Well, you still, so now you're around $635, right? For this battery right here. So if you divide that by 3.6 kilowatt hours, which is how much energy the battery can hold, now you're looking at $176 a kilowatt hour. Now add uh, shipping to that and then you're somewhere around probably $200 a kilowatt hour. So what do you say? Is DIY still something that you find attractive or that sounds good for you? Or are plug and play batteries the way for you to go, right? So there are other benefits for do doing DIY. One of the ones that I haven't mentioned yet is the fact that by doing these DIY projects, we keep these batteries from going back to China. 
and China will extract more value off of those. They will resend them back to us and then uh, basically get us to pay more money. America is their number one customer when it comes to consumer electronics, right? So if we don't use those batteries that are still good and usable, and if we just let them go back to China, then they can squeeze more, more profit out of these products from us, right? And so then we are essentially sending a bunch of money still back to China, right? So if you're patriotic, if you feel that, you know, Americans should have more jobs and America should uh, keep their value here, but that, you know, this doing this is a good thing. It's also good for the environment because if these don't have to go an extra round trip to China, then uh, it's good for the environment, right? We're not using all that energy in diesel, you know, sending the ship going back to China and then they, you know, repackage it and send it right back to us kind of thing. And there are other benefits of doing DIY that I'm going to touch on here in this video. But if you're DIY, post it in the comments. If you are up to building something like this, post it in the comments. I have a bunch of these projects that are similar to this, right? Where I'm building like a thing so that you can use it. Uh, so you can put in a box, so you can put connectors, you can put stuff and then squeeze all the life, all the usable life out of these products that are already built, that are already sold, and they're already here in America, right? And so they shouldn't be going to the trash, they should be going back to China, they shouldn't be going to landfills. They shouldn't even be broken down to be recycled for the commodities, right? They're, they still have usable life, so we need to stop being so wasteful and that going the DIY route will help you do that, right? So. Thank you for watching this video. We'll see you guys on the next one. If you are interested in doing that project right there, I will put the links to all the little things that I use to make that one battery in particular uh, in the description of this video, right? Okay, thank you, bye.